I'm so excited, I don't even know where to start. Hey everybody, I am glad that you're here and I am glad that I'm here and uh, I just want to say hi and welcome to this video. Welcome to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and today it is official. This is the budget basher that you and I are going to be building. This quadcopter right here, five inch quadcopter and this video is going to be the parts list video. Now um, I am going to come out with another video after this one talking about kind of why I have which parts that I do the parts that I do and um, and kind of more a lot more detail that you might want to you might you might be really be interested in if this is your first quad build um, and just more more information just kind of more talking about it and I want this video to be shorter it's gonna be a bit more to the point and just pretty much the parts because uh, currently we're coming up on a bunch of holiday sales and stuff and I want to make sure that you can take advantage of that to get this quad for as cheap as you can speaking of the price this quad comes in right at around $150 maybe 160 and then like there's shipping and stuff but right around 150 it's a budget quad it's one it's a it's not your super duper cheap cheap but it's also not your your super duper you know high end if this is your first quad this thing is going to be amazing like this thing is fantastic it's, it's going to be way better quality um than like an eachine wizard um as far as i know unless they change how they build them uh just recently i mean it's going to be it's going to be legit. This is going to be a legit quad, and I made this to be a freestyle quadcopter. I think this is going to be a great way to learn how to build quads because I'm going to walk you through the whole process in the coming build series. Now let's get into actually what this quad uh, is made up of and all of its parts. There is a full parts list for all of the parts that I have on this quadcopter right now in the description below with links. I'm gonna try and make this as easy as possible for all of us. So here's what's really cool and exciting about this quadcopter. The best part about this quad is that, and the reason why it's so cheap, is this is, I'm using the Diatone, uh, fairly new Diatone Mamba F405 flight controller. Um, Again, we'll talk more about this in the in the coming video uh, because there's a lot to talk about with this. But just know that this is a a flight controller four in one ESC stack. So you have um, pretty much the, all like the this is the most important thing right here. So you have your flight controller and all four ESCs in one nice little space, and um, it's going to make soldering it a lot simpler and it's also really cheap uh relatively cheap i mean it's like half the cost of what it would normally cost to get a full stack like this so it's about 45 dollars currently for the camera we have a fox ear uh fox ear aero mini pro 2.5 millimeter uh this one happens to be a uh four by three but i actually have flown this just fine on uh on a 16 by 9 um goggles so I'm not sure what's up with that. Anyway, but uh, so this this uh, it's good good cameras. So that's our camera for our motors. We have the DYS Samgook series Woo. These are Woo motors. Woo, right there. You can kind of see those. Uh, and this one is a 2206, 2400 kV. Very very nice. Um, it's actually a little bit peppier than what I'm used to, um, but I like it. I like them a lot. Uh, these props are these are my favorite props right now. These are T5040. Uh, C propellers uh, made by Dalprop, fantastic propeller, love them, uh, super durable. For our video transmitter, um, I'm using the Eachine TX805, and this is a like a, it's it's pretty much got all the bells and whistles, 40 channel uh, transmitter. It goes up to 800 milliwatts, which that's pretty crazy. Um, I don't really plan on using it above 25, uh, maybe 200, and it also will allow us to do uh, smart audio so we can change the uh, channels and VTX power um, through our OSD using our transmitter instead of having to connect to Betaflight. And our VTX antenna, currently I'm using a uh, Pagoda antenna. Uh, this is actually my first time using a Pagoda antenna and it seems to be, it seems to be working fine. Um, I'm not having quite the same kind of reception as I am with, with my other quad setup, but that could be due to various things beyond just the antenna. Um, but in any case, so you can go with a Pagoda or you can go with like a standard kind of um, Amway style antenna. 
um, that's fine. But one thing that I want to tell you to keep in mind, uh, be very careful when you're purchasing your VTX antennas and your VTX, uh, because you'll have options of, of having RP, SMA, or SMA connections. Now, the main thing is pretty much just you want to match RP, SMA, and RP, SMA. So you, you, wanna, so you want your antenna to fit your uh, VTX connector. So uh, here's a little... Um, Here's a little article thingy uh, that I found that was very helpful to help remember that because I get confused about that all the time still. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. Now for our receiver, uh, we're going to use the FLI 14 plus rece uh, receiver. It's a 14 channel mini receiver and I'm using FlySky by the way. So this is for FlySky. If, you have, uh, if you're using another brand of transmitter, uh, use whichever receiver that you should use that you want to use um, and what's cool about this is it it uh, does have RSSI output so we can actually see in our OSD our on-screen display we can see the uh, the the how good the connection is between our transmitter and the receiver in the quadcopter which is great so that we can tell if we're flying out of range or not and that uses iBus by the way and last but not least is our a frame because we gotta you know connect all this stuff to something and this frame is the Hecate uh, 230 230 millimeter, uh, five inch frame, and it's, I think it's actually, it's performing better than I thought that it would. Um, I haven't gotten to crash this a whole lot, and w so we'll see how it holds up on the durability. I will say that I was not super impressed with the uh, with the connection for the arms, because there's pretty much just one, one large screw um, connecting the arms, and then there's these other ones, but these go into the flight controller stack, so you can't tighten those down too much. Um, in any case, uh, again, we'll go into more detail of all this stuff in another video, um, but uh, suffice it to say, this is a pretty decent frame. It's about $20, so it's definitely a budget frame, um, but there are some other frames that, that you could certainly use instead of this one if you felt that another frame looked cooler or uh, was looked more solid or something. But I think that uh, this one has, um, what does this have, five millimeter arms? Four millimeter arms. This one has four millimeter arms. Pretty dang thick arms, uh, really. A lot thicker than the, uh, a lot thicker than this other quad that I was using. This is an RMRC frame. Um, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. So, so the in any case, the basically the frame is a freestyle type of frame. I think it's going to work very well. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it is a budget frame. And if you find a frame that you think would work better, you, are, you can certainly uh, use that. And I think you'll be able to build it pretty much just like how this one is built. Um, <clears throat> and that does it for all those components. The, the thing on here you probably noticed is a GoPro mount. And uh, I'm still working on getting the GoPro footage jello free, but so far, it's pretty good, um, and I made this mount out of Instamorph. Um, I'm not sure what kind of camera you're going to be using, and I'm not sure exactly if the, the mounting um, pattern here uh, for these hex screws is standard or not, so you'll, you're kind of on your own for your camera mount, um, but we can talk about that in future videos. So anyway, uh, again, this all of this comes into right at about $150 if you buy from Banggood, and I will have all of, the, all of these items listed um, uh, with links in the description below uh, for Banggood. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going, if you're, if you want to buy, um, you know, locally, or if you want to buy, if you don't want to buy from Banggood and you, and you're in the U S I will try and list, um, other sources for this same stuff, either Amazon or, uh, my favorite race day quads, um, or various other places. And even if it's not exactly the same, you'll still be able to build the same basic setup and I think if you if if you watch this build series that we're about to do um, you will you should like have all the skills and knowledge and confidence to adapt whatever I'm using to whatever you're using um, the most important part being that you have the Mamba flight controller uh, and it's so cheap and so capable for what it is it says it can go up to 6s um, 6 cell battery so 24 volt that uh, I don't know why you would not want it unless it turns out that this thing just falls apart after a certain number of hours but I don't think that's gonna happen 
Again, we'll talk more about these individual components in coming videos because there is a lot to talk about and a lot to, uh, to learn. So that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments or questions in the comments section down there. And um, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.